This is going to be an incredibly short video just to discuss a video that Scott Chen recently made about a Reddit post he saw which says that people need to stop complaining about tunneling when they're in fact just bad at hiding. I think it's possible to understand the post in several few ways but I think the post only is really arguing one specific scenario. In his video Scott mentions that he thinks that it's 95% the fault of whoever is unhooking unless the unhooked person sprints straight into the killer of course. Which let's be real that happens a lot when people want to use their endurance the body block for whoever just unhooked them which is entirely fine of course but in that case you can really complain about the killer tunneling you which we all know does happen he then also says that when the killer comes back to the hook he's already close enough and he can't hide because anything you do whether you just walk away or sprint away the killer is going to hear you or see your scratch marks or see your pools of blood which i completely agree with and i don't think that that's the point that the post is arguing and i also don't think that anyone disagrees that when that happens that's the fault of the survivor i mean in that case i don't even think that is a matter of opinion it's literally a fact that when the killer is in proximity of the hook and they're close enough to where you cannot run away it's literally not the fault of the survivor who's getting unhooked because there's actually nothing they can do in that scenario. I think there isn't even a point to defending something like that and I don't think that that's what the post is arguing here anyways. What I notice is that if you look at the post, the person in the post is explaining that they don't camp, they're not close to the hook. So what I am understanding from this post is that what they mean is they're walking around the map doing stuff, setting down traps, patrolling generators, they're in a different part of the map and then suddenly they see scratch marks or hear grunts of pain so they check it out because they're not chasing another survivor and what do they find? They find the survivor that got, just got unhooked. I've been in that scenario a lot myself where I purposely try to not tunnel because for some reason I like to play nice okay even though it makes me lose a whole bunch of times but in that scenario I'm like okay I don't want to go after you but if I don't and there's no other survivor around I drop chase for no reason just to be nice while risking so much because I might not find another survivor for a really long time. In that scenario I also think it's kind of entitled to expect spectacular to go for someone else even though it is really nice if you're let go obviously. I think it also depends on if it's sweaty or not whether the killer is almost about to lose or not. Let's say you're at four gens and the killer still tunnels you out. Yeah I guess that you might find it a bit more sweaty but if there's only what, two or one gen left it's like what is the killer supposed to do like what do you expect them to do at that point i think just in general it's kind of a misunderstanding because scott later mentioned something called survivor induced tunneling which is basically what he talked about before where if you get unhooked by someone and they just leave you there they either like walk away and hide they are not going to be found because usually they're healthy so they don't make noise they can just walk away they don't leave pools of blood so when a killer comes back to the hook if they are like proxy camping what are they supposed to do they see a survivor that got freshly unhooked who's probably leaving scratch marks and even if not if they're trying to hide and walk away they will hear the grunts of pain they'll see their pools of blood so they cannot really do anything they can choose to maybe leave the unhooked survivor there but then they risk not finding the person who unhooked because they're way harder to find. Maybe they're already gone. Maybe they're hiding somewhere close, but can be found. Maybe the person unhooked themselves. There's so many like variables. It's incredibly inefficient if at that point the killer just leaves the unhooked person there. And if you really think about it, I think that's what the post is arguing. I think they're kind of making the same point. Though instead of it being survivor induced tunneling, it's just the unhooked survivor being caught in a bad spot. And I guess it's unfortunate, but in that scenario, I think there's way more fault on the person that got unhooked because why why are you in a different part of the map where the killer is while the killer is not near the hook at all? Even in that case, I think there could just be so many variables that make it not the fault of the person who got unhooked and they're maybe just in a really bad spot at the wrong time. The whole point that I think the post is making is that in that scenario, if you're caught, it is not the killer's responsibility to just leave you and it's not the killer's fault that you're getting tunneled at that point. Something somewhere went wrong. Either the person who unhooked you didn't want to heal you for some reason. The killer isn't even there at that point, so there is no reason to not heal unless it's maybe a plague or a legion. But the reason I wanted to make this video is just first of all because I like talking about that by daylight but I think nobody disagrees that if the killer comes straight back to the hook it's basically impossible to hide from the killer because you're injured and loud and leave all sorts of marks around you but instead the point was more about when you get caught out in a bad part of the map when you're already away from the hook and the killer just happens to find you by chance. Anyways go check out Scott's video it's down in the description. Check out this video on the end card if you want to see more of my content and as always have a wonderful day.